Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of my photography videos. So in the past six years or so, I have taken over a hundred hotels, which is a lot of experience actually. But today I want to show you guys the equipment that I'm using and uh, I think it's pretty interesting. So let's dive in uh, the equipment sets that I'm using. Hey guys, what's going on here? So a lot of people ask me in the past what hotel photography is like um, because photography, uh, hotel photography is a very specific type of photography. All this stuff that I have here are very essential and I don't bring any gimmicks like stuff that I don't use. I'm a very practical shooter so I try to get things done as uh, efficient as possible because you don't want to waste the client's time when you um, get paid by the days you don't want to spend like an extra like two days three days you want to get it done within a time frame uh, sometimes I bring less and sometimes more it depends on the, uh, uh, the size of a project I try to travel light and uh, as minimal as possible because this this is really heavy so yeah uh, this is a summary of like all the gears that I'm using. Let's get started with the clamps here. These are clamps I use to tighten certain things in a hotel, like uh, curtains. Uh, curtains are really important because you can't really uh, retouch these items. You can, but you don't want to spend like a million hours on retouching process. I have some light tapes here, paper tape here. Next up, uh, I have this LED light here. Sometimes I use it to lit up the model that I'm shooting. If I want to use just ambient light, so this is really good use for it. But it's really heavy. I have a ton of uh, memory cards here. I shoot so many photos like per day, probably like I shoot around 400 to 600 photos per day. So make sure you have enough memory cards here. I actually double back up the uh, items. And when I'm done with this, I'm gonna do an additional backup on my digital hard drive, portable hard drive here. This is a four terabyte, is it terabyte? Yeah, four terabyte uh, hard drive. And make sure you have enough battery. I have a battery charger for my camera battery inside here, uh, batteries for my flash uh, speed lights and let's go over to the uh, flash units so let's start with the small ones these are two speed lights that I'm using uh, I use them a lot because when you travel you want to travel light and these are um, very useful. They're not as powerful as the strobes, but they'll work. You can buy Nikon or whatever Canon uh, speed lights, but they're a lot more expensive. I use, in this case, I use like uh, Chinese flashlights, they're pretty good. Uh, you know. So I have a bunch of uh, flash triggers here, remote controls here for my speed lights. Also from you know. So. I bring a couple or more. These are really heavy light stands sometimes. I have um, an umbrella here for quick uh, softbox. Diffusing the lights here. This is pretty useful here. 
This is where you put your flash in on your light, light stand. I don't know what, what this thing is called, but uh, it's from uh, Godox, this one. Yeah, sometimes I'm, if I want to diffuse the light with this honeycomb, just put this honeycomb on my uh, speed lights here. So for the big flash, uh, I'm using a Jinbei HD600, a portable strobe here. This is the battery unit here. I think this is pretty heavy, but sometimes it's useful when you have to, have to uh, I have to flash a little up like bigger areas, like it's more powerful, I guess. And, uh, this is my tablet, my Wacom tablet, my Mac. So this is really important because after the shoot, I sometimes have to retouch stuff and it's super convenient. So I have my drone here. It's the Mavic Pro. Uh, it's super small. I love this thing. Um, I crashed it once at a hotel in Xi'an, it was pretty bad. <laughs> so I use it to fly up the hotel and shoot the exterior sometimes and shoot some footages. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty nice drone here. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Pretty small, compact. These are the batteries for the Mavic Pro. Remote control for the Mavic Pro. Uh, let's get to the heavy stuff here. Um, this is a tripod, carbon fiber, pretty big. I have a ball head here. Make sure it's sturdy enough to hold your uh, heavy cameras. Yeah, I just use whatever like a Chinese brand here. It 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 works. You don't you can buy the most expensive brands and stuff. But for me, I don't really need to buy like a, what, like a, how much did it cost? Like a thousand dollar, maybe five hundred, a thousand dollar tripod. I mean, these, these ones works, work fine for me. Um, sometimes I bring uh, the Octobox. Uh, it's a 47 inch uh, Octobox, a meter 20. Uh, it's, Pretty nice, I don't wanna drop. So yeah. So it's easy to unfold and do it. There is another item that I'm using uh, for lighting uh, rooms sometimes. This is a really big item. This is a lantern uh, softbox. Uh, like here, you can see one sample here. Click. So, I really like this product, uh, despite the uh, the humongous size of this thing here, uh, because it spreads like a very even light inside the room. If the room is too dark, if you want to fill fill in the light a little bit, and this is the perfect light for filling the light in the room. Okay, coming to my favorite parts, uh, the lenses. I just recently bought this Yongno 35mm 2.0. Uh, this is one of my favorite lenses, it's the 50mm 1.4. I shoot uh, most of my portraits, uh, lifestyle pictures with this one. It's really, really cool, this lens 1.4. Then I have um, 85mm 1.8 I shoot some portraits and staff uh, members with this Wish I had the uh, 1.4, it's even better, but it's way too expensive And um, we have a 2470 2.8 here It's a pretty heavy unit here This is a pretty versatile lens, uh, 24, the range 24 to 70 So I shoot some rooms with this sometimes um, um, but I prefer to shoot with a uh, prime lens. But sometimes, if I need to shoot something quick, uh, if I have limited time, I can't swap the uh, prime lenses quickly, I'll use this one. So, I, this range is pretty convenient uh, 24 to 70. I can shoot uh, facilities, I can shoot people, lifestyle. 
But as I said, this is a zoom lens, so I only use it when I my there's time constraints. Okay, this um, I have a 14 to 24 millimeter 2.8 here. Um, this is my main lens uh, shooting uh, all the facilities here. I'll probably say I'll shoot um, about 60 to 70 percent of. Uh, all my work doing the hotel shoot here, all the facilities here. Some of you guys might ask like, oh, that's all you use, you don't have a tilt shift lens. Like most people use a tilt shift for architecture and stuff. Well, I used to have a um, 24 millimeter tilt shift. I started using it a little bit when I started. I didn't like it because then you have to take like three pictures and merge all these three pictures. It's very time consuming with a tilt shift. I instead of you just just use the 14 millimeter. It's, it's I, I'm not sure about the stretch on the side, the distortion. I don't know. I I think the distortion is less on a uh, tilt shift. That's why a lot of people use it. But for me, I can compensate it like using softwares, and I just want to minimize my workload. So here are my two main bodies. I have the D810. For my uh, as a my main body, uh, 36 megapixel, pretty nice. Uh, and my backup uh, body, a D800. Um, uh, I use it as a backup uh, because sometimes what happens is you, you never know. I mean, one time my shutter freezes, and yeah, it was pretty scary. Uh, imagine you're in the middle of a shoot and something breaks down, and then you have you don't have a camera so so that's why I always bring the D800 as a backup yeah that's pretty much it here's the full unit yeah that's it thanks for watching um, and don't forget to subscribe I'll see you next time